In Montana, you tend to see things a little differently. And in the city of Bozeman, growing up surrounded by mountains that reach the sky, it's kind of hard not to. And here, Steve Danes is no different. The kid from Montana who couldn't wait to go outside. I'm Steve Danes, I'm a fifth generation Montanan. My great great grandmother came from Norway and homesteaded in northern Montana. And I count myself one of the luckiest guys alive to be able to live in this amazing state of Montana. But uh, back in the days I was growing up, uh, a lot of folks really didn't know much about our way of life out here. He was always outside. I don't think of him as an inside person. I think of Steve as an outdoor person. Uh, Steve always had told me about his adventures uh, fishing and hunting and hiking in the mountains. Steve kind of prompted and pushed us to say, hey, let's go out and, and climb this mountain. And it's not anything we would have done by ourselves, but uh, Steve kind of led us up there. And it's a memory I have with him and something I've done that I have never done since. So he would go to climb and he always went to the top. He always got to the peak and I would always wait by the telephone till he could get to a phone and call me to let me know he was okay. And as a mother, I was always scared to death and I always waited for those phone calls. But the wilderness was always a part of his life. Uh, quite often uh, the conversation will be, uh, gosh, you gotta see this big buck that I shot, you know, out in Eastern Montana or, you should have seen the antelope I saw that I missed, and things like that and so forth. It's, it's hard to explain how one becomes connected to the place in which they live, the environment in which they live. And without living that environment and growing up in that environment, you can't have that special connection to that. Steve, growing up here, has that special connection to the land. But the question is, how does one go from being the great outdoorsman to finding the next big thing for Montana? I was the oldest of three kids, so two younger sisters. And uh, dad was out there in his pickup trying to round up business and mom was uh, working on the accounting end and making sure the payroll got delivered every two weeks. The main topic at the dinner table is often business. So he understood, uh, I guess, I guess the trials and tribulations of running a small business. And I just saw, you know, the ups and downs, how hard it is to get a business going and start it up and, and growing jobs. It's, it's not easy to do. I remember after I graduated from Montana State in engineering, I wanted to stay in Montana, but the jobs weren't here. And so I, uh, I interviewed, I took a job with Procter & Gamble, a great company, but I remember the day I left Montana when I got on an airplane to fly out to the Midwest to start my first job. I was flying between Bozeman and Denver and then connecting. And I was flying over the Beartooth Mountains, a beautiful country that I spent uh, many, many miles and weekends hiking and backpacking and seeing these mountain lakes that I could name every one of them from the air. And I gotta admit, I had a tear rolling down my cheek as I was leaving the state that uh, I love so much because I couldn't get a good job in Montana. And I told myself, I'm gonna find a way back. I'm gonna fight my way back to Montana and work someday to create opportunities so my kids and their kids have a chance and opportunity to stay in this great state instead of having to leave it to find a job. And fight his way back, he did. After a successful career with Procter & Gamble, Steve always knew that there was something more that he could do for the future of Montana. Developing Right Now Technologies in Bozeman really is not the most obvious place to put a high-tech company. And I think that that does take vision to see that this, that's where it needs to be. There were many folks who said, you can't start up a technology company in a place like Montana. You're gonna have to be in California or New York. You're gonna have to be somewhere near a big city. And we said, no, uh, we're gonna prove you wrong. So right now, technology's seed product that we were selling was a knowledge base that was basically a dynamic FAQ page. It got to the point where we could tell you based on just the way people were navigating your website, what question they were gonna ask you. Right Now Technologies was more than just an upstart. The company went public in 2004 and grew to 1,100 employees, 17 offices around the world, with products in 33 languages. 
but still had their headquarters in Bozeman, Montana. A lot of who they were recruiting were Montana State grads or alumni, Montana State alumni, kids that I, we targeted a lot of folks that had roots in Montana to bring them back to work for right now. And one of the highest compliments they ever received was from a, a grandmother who said, thank you for creating jobs in Montana for my kids so that I don't have to go to California now to see my grandkids. Steve goes to the next level. He looks at what could be accomplished if we were to turn chemical engineering into high tech, into jobs, into the computer industry, uh, use that in our education system and expand that. You know, that's a, that's a community. That's a fabric of the community. And a community uh, stands together when everybody's working together. And Steve understands how, how communities work. The kid from Montana who made good on his word and brought Montana to the future without forgetting about the past. And if you happen to be around the mountain, you just might see him. I was in a store in, in Costco, went down the end of the aisle, and here he was, him and his wife. And we wound up spending uh, almost an hour, hour and a half at the end of this alley, uh, visiting about the things that were important to us. And uh, he is not a guy that just said hello and ran. And it's, he's been a great friend since. Uh, in the end, Steve's, Steve's my friend. And uh, I know he'll always be my friend. And, and we look forward to the time when we can get together and, and uh, get the fishing poles out and uh, dunk a few worms.